Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video we'll be looking at a medium Active Directory box called Dictionary from CyberSec Labs. So let's jump straight into the video. So first of all we do what we always do, we run an Nmap scan. And in this case there's nothing really to note here. This, these ports are very normal for any Active Directory domain and there's nothing much to look at. We see we have a domain, dictionary.csl and we have this host name saying dictionary-dc, dc obviously standing for domain controller. How do we move on from this? Well, in an Active Directory domain, it's always nice to know what users are part of the domain. So something that you want to do is enumerate those. But how do you do that? Well, we can query Kerberos for it. We are going to ask Kerberos for a TGT. That's a ticket granting ticket. In Kerberos, obviously, when you want to do things in uh, the Active Directory domain, you have to be authenticated. So how do you authenticate? You authenticate with a username and a password. If those match, you can perform your action. However, if you had to enter your password for every single action you performed within the network, that would become a bit cumbersome. And that's why we have ticket granting tickets. So uh, these tickets allow you to, so you authenticate once you get a ticket and that ticket is valid for a certain amount of time and you can use it to perform your actions. You get that ticket from Kerberos by authenticating with a username and password. So what we'll be doing to see if usernames are valid is, we'll be asking Kerberos, hey, give me a ticket for this user and see what the response is. Obviously, it's not going to give us a ticket uh, without entering a password, or maybe it is, we'll find out later. Um, but it's going to give us different kinds of responses and from that we can then identify, hey, this is a valid username and this isn't. So let's see how we do that. Uh, so first of all, in Python, there's a bit of setup to do. So a couple of imports from Impacket because Impacket is amazing. Uh, we're also gonna set up a logger so that we get the debug logs from Impacket back to us. But then we can start get started. So first of all, we make a principle with a username. I'm gonna try a username that I know or that, I, that will most likely not exist on this box, which is Ping Draconian. And principle really is just an identifier for a user. So we're, we create a principle with username Ping Draconian, and then we are gonna say get Kerberos TGT, so get a ticket granting ticket for that username. I supply an empty password, the domain name, LM hash and NT hash are empty, and then the Kerberos domain controller host is going to be the IP address. We can see that the script here tries to connect and we get an error. And this error is a KDC error uh, C principle unknown, client not found in the Kerberos database. So what we expected because Ping Draconian is most likely not a user and now we have validated that indeed Ping Draconian is not a user in this domain. Cool, Let, now let's try a user that we know exists. In almost every, uh, or I've never seen a domain where administrator was not a user. So I'm gonna try that and see what the response is. Again, we create a principal administrator and then we try to get our TGT. This time we get an error again, but we get a pre-auth failed error. Pre-authentication information was invalid. Now this means that our password was wrong. And well, it would be very strange if the administrator account has an, had an empty password. So now we have a way of identifying whether a user exists in the domain or not. So we can grab a word list with a lot of users, usernames and just try them and see which one come out valid. However, which word list do we pick? Well, let's think about how Active Directory domains are used in companies. In companies, you often have your uh, login is your first name, dot last name, just your first name for small companies or uh, first letter of the first name dot last name. So we can create a word list um, that exists out of all of those combinations, or we can just start with just names. And that way, try to find out all of these users. Luckily, there are tools for that. We'll get to that in a bit. But you might come across something a little different when trying. So here you see that I tried to create a principle for the username Isabel, and I got the TGT, so the ticket granting ticket. And I actually received a ticket. As you can see, the debug here gives me a, a hash or, or something that we can crack. Now, what happened here? Well, previously we saw that 
pre-authentication failed. Now by default, every new user in an Active Directory domain has pre-authentication enabled, so you need a password to like, log in. However, it can be disabled for users, and in that case, you just need to supply the username and you actually get a valid encrypted TGT back. Now obviously, that is that should not be set for any user in a, a, in a domain, unless the user has a very, very, very strong password. But we get uh, a hash here, so how does that work? Well, what we get back is an encrypted TGT ticket, so an encrypted ticket. Uh, encrypted, well, it's encrypted with a client secret, so we also control the secret. And that's why you will see that the hash exists out of two parts, so the key and then uh, the actual hash. And this is called an SREP roasting, uh, so SREP standing for Authentication Service Request, I believe. And this is obviously also one of the reasons why you want to enumerate all the usernames because right now we can try to crack this hash and if we get a password then we are into the system or then we obviously have more information. Now before I go and crack this hash uh, I want to show you some tools that you can use to actually brute force here uh, or like to enumerate all of these users. So you have curbroot with user enum and then you just supply a file with all of the users that you want to try. And that will also obviously come out with uh, our uh, hash that we can crack. And then we can also use mpacket mp users as well for that. So those are your options when doing the brute forcing, um, when, when enumerating the users. But now let's try to crack this, this hash. For that, I obviously put the hash in a file. And then I said John, I ran John, so John is going to crack that with a word list. And I just picked rock you here. Now that comes back with a result and that result is June 2013. Now that we have a password, let's try to use it somewhere. So with the account with the name Isabel and the password, can we log into RDP? Nope. WinRM? Nope. PSExec? Nope. Now the only thing that I know left is RPC, remote procedure call. Does that work? And yes, that luckily works. But what is RPC? So RPC is mainly used for computers to communicate between each other, exchange information with each other. However, we can connect to it using RPC client. So for the user Isabel, let's connect and let's do some enumeration. So the thing that I always do in enumeration is enum dom users. That's going to list, give us a list of all the domain users in this domain. And we get a whole list back, so administrator, guest, Isabel, C Valencia, and backup dash Isabel. Okay, so we have these new users. What can we do with that? Well, we have this password as well, and this password was a month followed by a year. Now, maybe there's bad password policy in this company, in this company and if there is bad password policy, maybe somebody just changed the month or changed the year. So what if we just create a quick word list so we can do that in Python with the script, for example. So I have the months, I have the years, and then we say, okay, write them all into like append them together. So January 13, 14, 15, 16, and so on, write them all together and put them in a word list file. And then we can use crack map exec uh, to just take in all the usernames, take in all the passwords, and try them all out uh, and, and see if we get a hit. So we run crack, crack map exec winrm with our users file or password file on dictionary.csl and then the IP. And then we see it starts running through all the passwords. So it doesn't find anything. And then eventually, however, we get this hit for backup dash Isabel with the password October 2019. So we are now able to log in as backup dash Isabel and we can finally get some command execution because obviously this is WinRM, so we can use evil WinRM to log in. So then next up, we obviously get a, an evil WinRM session here. Uh, so we have PowerShell execution and we do what we always do. We start uploading WinPiece because WinPiece does so much enumeration. Now I would not recommend running WinPiece on, a, on actual environments. There I would recommend doing it uh, yourself, but in this case, just use it. Uh, 
the upload functionality in Evil WinRM is really useful, so I use that. So just upload then your local file, and I will upload it. And then we start running WinPiece. However, this is so much output, so I'm going to skip over all of it until we get to the interesting stuff here. Browser's information. It says, hey, we found these saved credentials for Firefox. And then a whole bunch of credentials all for the CyberSec Labs website. So somebody saved credentials for this website here. Now, how come that we can see them decrypted? Because obviously Firefox doesn't save them in plain text, right? Well, indeed, Firefox doesn't save them in plain text. And actually, we can go to the place where Firefox saves them. So that location is users. Let's uh, actually get this up here. Users backup dash isable app data roaming Mozilla Firefox profiles. Then you have your profile and then you have logins.json. Now, if we type that, we'll see that we see we have uh, encrypted passwords. So here, encrypted username and then encrypted password. However, where are the keys? Because obviously they have to be local somewhere because, or, or I guess Firefox could keep them in the, up on their servers, but that's not what happens here. They are local. And if we do a, uh, a DIR of this directory, we see here key4.db, and that is where, um, where the keys for decrypting the passwords are. So that's how we can get the passwords. Now, obviously, WinPiece can do that for us nice and easy, so we don't have to worry about decrypting it. But now you know where the logins are. So in logins.json, and then the keys are in key for the or key three in some uh, installations, it's key three. Um, but that's where you can find those credentials. With those credentials, can we do anything new? Well, I just went straight ahead and jumped straight into trying to log in as administrator and the first password I tried actually worked. So that's great. So now I have a, a shell as administrator and that is uh, the box pwned and we are admin. So that is really cool. I really enjoyed this box. It, it taught a lot of things that you need to know about Active Directory, obviously. I really enjoyed making this video as well. I put a lot of time into it. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below. That's the first time I ask it, I think. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you for another video. So take care and goodbye.